Welcome to the Lend Academy podcast, session number 10. In this 10th edition of the Lend Academy podcast, we ventured out to Lending Club. And I was in San Francisco recently, sat down with Scott Sanborn, the Chief Operating Officer of Lending Club, and we we sort of talked about a whole variety of topics, the increase in the number of loans that have appeared on the platform recently, we talked about Lending Club Prime, the impact of institutional investors, how they feel about the feeding time, those four times a day when the loans are added, and the Lending Club IPO and uh, and several other things. So... I um, hope you enjoy this interview. Okay, I'm here in the Lending Club offices with uh, Scott Sanborn, the Chief Operating Officer of Lending Club. Welcome to the podcast, Scott. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Okay, so let's. I was, I was on Lending Club this morning and noticed that uh, you've got over 1,000 loans uh, available now. You've had uh, like 7,500 in the last week. I mean, things have, things have been ramping up. I mean, what, what's happened the last, uh, this month, shall we say? <clears throat> well... Uh, I think as we've talked about several times, it's a marketplace, so there's supply and demand. Uh, we at Lending Club have been working pretty diligently uh, since I think we talked We talked about it and everyone saw that last summer investor supply of capital outstripped our expectations. Yes. This was partly on the heels of the Google announcement where we just got quite a bit of attention and quite mm-hmm. a bit of investor dollars. Since that time, we've been made a number of changes. Uh, we are uh, actively managing our whole and fractional loan allocation to match available uh, capital supplies as well as put purchase limitations in place for larger investors so that we could ensure you know, a better balance on the platform. Um, so you know, we're, I don't think that the number won't be static. It'll ebb and flow, sure. but you know, we're, we're pleased that we've been able to Create available inventory that allows also you know enough time for the little guys to the, the, the smaller retail investors to come in those who are still doing it manually to come in and place orders and get access to inventory. So so let me get this right. You're actually looking at your total supply of loans and you're deciding on a manual basis on a, like on a day by day what's going on the no, whole loan, what's going on the retail. No. So what we we have. A really good handle, long-term visibility view into our our you know direct to lending club retail investments is pretty predictable. We know how many roughly how many people are going to sign up every month, and we know roughly how much money they're going to bring. And we have similar visibility on the the institutional side, right. where at this point we have very good visibility to how much money is coming in when. So on a macro level, we have good visibility, and we kind of plan our supply accordingly. And then, at, because things can happen, you know, a wire that we expected to arrive on Wednesday is not going to show up until the following week, then we are more dynamically looking at what's happening. It's definitely not daily. Probably, I mean, we have a monthly standing meeting where we, a platform balance meeting where we all get down and talk and talk about what do we expect is coming, what loans are coming in, what's the investor supply look like, and how are we feeling. But intra month, if Something happens. We'll allocate, you know. Right. So, so you said so that. So you knew this was going to happen, and you knew there was going to be a thousand plus lines on the platform, right? Mm-hmm. Now. Right. Correct. Okay. Okay. So that on that, so you've obviously, you know, I mean, you you started a lending club back in two thousand and ten when loans, like the the volume was a fraction of what you have now. Ten million in loans in the month. Right. So. Which. Yeah, so basically we've got we're a little more, we more than that now. <laughs> we issue forty or fifty percent more than that on a day right. at this point. Right. So, so how what have you done? We're, like you've you've scaled borrowers so dramatically. I mean, what have you done differently? To, what do you do differently today than you did in two thousand and ten? Well, I think in two thousand and ten, part of the challenge was well, the challenge was was shifting. You know, we had a small team in. It wasn't like we had a group of people focused on investors and a group of people focused on borrowers. We had a tiny group of people and, you know, we would have to go unlock some borrower loan demand. And then as soon as we did that, we'd, you know, have to then go unlock some investor capital supply. Over time, 
we've certainly figured out and developed channels that are kind of permanent on both sides that bring more predictability. We've also significantly scaled those teams so that we have, you know, a robust group of people in place that are working on both things simultaneously. And we, you know, we relook at we relook at our org structure. We look we relook at our infrastructure pretty frequently, just given the pace of growth, to make sure you know are we are we positioned, are we resourced appropriately for a year from now, given how quickly we're mm-hmm. growing. So can you can you give us any idea about the channels that have become more important? I know we all know about the, the direct mail that goes out a lot. But you know you're still using Google AdWords and that. So what? I mean, all, so all the channels are growing, uh, and they're all growing briskly. Obviously, in order to deliver the the current growth that we have, you know, to your point, direct mail has been effective in that it allows us to control. It's a it's a big lever that we have a good control on timing mm-hmm. as well as on credit mix. You right. know, because we can target that mail to deliver a mix based on investor demand. The other channels are all growing as well. I guess the difference with the other channels is, you know, let's take a partner. You know, a, a partnership drives a certain amount of loans, and if we can't double that next month, if right. we sure. certainly had a desire to, right? It, it it's based on the amount of traffic they're getting through their website or their funnel or whatever that comes to us. So. Right. Those are kind of more smooth, and direct mail allows us to, because what's been important to us is setting a plan and sticking to that plan, because at, at the scale we're currently at, making sure all of our organizational infrastructure is in place, you know, data security, data scalability, operation scalability, phone systems, all of these things, you know, making sure the whole org is ready is partly a factor of us saying we did this last month, we're going to do 5% more than that this month and 6% more than that next month and 7% more the following month and then back down to five. Everybody, be ready. Get right. your teams in place. Right. right. So what about like, you know, you've now got, I don't know, what, 150, 200,000 borrowers that have actually placed loans with you. How are you going after those people? Because I imagine that's a, you've got an existing relationship with these people. It's somewhat an easier sell. Are you really aggressively trying to get those people to, you know, to pony up for another loan, refinance even? What what are you doing with that? I mean, as as you're aware, the majority of our loans are for the purpose of eliminating uh, existing higher interest debt. And and the majority of those people are successfully eliminating that debt upon the receipt of a lending club loan. So... I think there are subsequent use cases that would, you know, maybe a planned purchase or, you know, kind of another sort of elective large part, you know, we see it musical instruments, home improvement, whatever, that we do get second customers and, and repeat usage. It has not been a significant growth driver yet. I think in the future, there's certainly an opportunity for that. Mm-hmm. As you probably know right now, you aren't even eligible for a second loan from Lending Club until you ha- are at least six months in right. and for quite a few people until you're 12 months in mm-hmm. on your existing right. loan. Right, right. Okay. I want to switch gears a bit to, to talk about Lending Club Prime. Lending Club Prime, you made some major changes to late last year and yeah, they've been great. My, you know, my own Prime account stays fully invested all the time. Oftentimes, you know, you're investing every day, sometimes multiple times a day. So can you can you just tell people like how just a little bit about how Prime works and sure. and how it's how it's changed? So for the listeners who don't know, Prime is essentially an automated investing service where the investor sets their target criteria. You know what what mix of grades they're looking for, and if they have a filter that they would like to set on top, what that would look like. They submit that, and essentially, Lending Club executes the trades on their behalf that meet their criteria and their allocation. So the benefit is it actually uh, will maintain your allocation over time. So just to make sure everybody's clear what I mean, meaning if you say I want 10% A's and 50% B's and 40% C's, fast forward three years, if you keep buying 10, 50, 40, that won't be your mix anymore because C's will default at a slightly higher rate than B's, which will default at a higher rate than A's. So over time, your mix would shift to be more concentrated in A's. Mm-hmm. What Prime does, it actually looks at your allocation 
by grade, your desired allocation by grade, and actually manages to maintain that over time. So if you want 10% A's as based on your outstanding principle, it will adjust your purchasing over time to maintain that allocation. It trades based on there's a, you know, there's essentially a scoring system or a ranking system that determines how accounts are traded. It's pretty straightforward. It's essentially how much cash do you have in your account divided by the account value overall. That will that determines a ranking of accounts to be traded. And then we look at when was the last time you were traded. So that factors in it well. So if it's been a long time since you've been traded, well, that you know accelerates you towards the top of the list. So what we're seeing is you know, for new investors, that's increasingly their preference is to kind of set their allocations in prime and let the system trade on their behalf. Okay. So when, you know, we all know the loans added to the platform four times a day, when does prime run after they have they added those loans? Um, it runs throughout the day, including at the listing periods. Okay. It's just running. So it's not, it is not wait until 10.01 and then go. It's trading right. throughout the day. Right. Okay. So I wanted to just talk a little bit about your like your policy code 2 loans. These are the loans that are the that aren't available to the retail investor, but there are they're 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 high interest loans. They're they're increasing, you know, I've I've been tracking those. They're certainly increasing month to month. What's what are your plans for policy code two? So increasingly uh, so policy code two essentially represents that's a that's a kind of a container for policy and product that isn't available yet to uh, public investors. Mm-hmm. So there are going to be many things in there. So you can expect to see it grow over time, and you can expect it to be probably occasionally quite lumpy as we're trying new things. So, for example, you know, small business loans will be in there until we're ready to make those publicly available for investors. So there's quite a bit in there. So, like I said, you can expect that to grow because we are testing new products, new ideas, new policies, and that's you know we're, we're, that's where you can see what we're doing and how much we're doing. But it'll it'll vary month to month. Right, so there's no like you, you the policy code two now. You're like it's nine plus months old since you first started at those. Correct. So you you've obviously got a bit of a read, at least somewhat, on how they're how they've been performing. Are they are they performing at your expected loss rates so far? So far, so good. Yeah, yeah, we're pleased. Okay, so when like do you have a timeline or at least a, a guess of when you think you may extend it out to everybody? You know, I think we're gonna want to have six to nine months of volume that is aged, you know, a year-ish so that we can, you know, get a really decent read on total amount of volume right. and a large amount of volume over a decent amount of time so that the predictability of those, you know, they got to be far enough along in the loan cycle that we feel good about, you know, the shape of the loss curve. Right. Okay. Fair enough. So I like, I wanted to talk about Banco, Banco Santander. I think I said that right. You know, they they were in the Wall Street Journal fairly recently talking yeah, about their, yeah, yeah talking about the, the they're they're a big buyer of the policy code too. You know, the journal actually said they're buying at least seventy five percent of those loans or thirty million dollars a month. So that's got to put them up there in in one of your top investors now, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> You know this question. I can't comment on individual investors. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. So, how how I mean, how deep is that is that relationship running? I mean, are you you know that they like they talked about in their S one because they're a public company. You know, they're talking about up to twenty five percent of the lending club platform is what they are contractually agreed to with you to purchase purchase loans from you. So, uh, what, where are they? Which at? is a right, not an obligation. Right. 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 So does that like up to twenty five percent? Obviously, is a that's a huge, massive number right now. So you're not going to tell me. Oh, are no, you? It's up to twenty five percent. So it's between zero and twenty five. Yeah. Precisely. <laughs> okay, we'll leave that one there then. So let's on to the the API. You're making your API now more readily available. You know, we we've, you know there are some tools now using it. People um, in this, you know, retail investors talk about feeding time—the four times a day when when loans are added, and then 
People try to gobble them up as quickly as they possibly can. Some people using the API, some people trying to do it manually. How, I mean, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about this frenzy that happens four times a day? So I think we've certainly seen recently that you know, the, the, the big question is, is there enough inventory available? And when there isn't the need to place, you know, the need to, the need to get in line during the listing periods is, is critical. I think what we've seen, you know, over the last few months is we've successfully been able to increase inventory to the point that it's no longer a requirement, especially given that increasingly the buying behavior of our investors is more index approach. So people are essentially looking for a grade allocation mm -hmm. and not looking for a specific B grade loan that has criteria that are different from the other B grade loans. It's essentially I need a B or I need a C, at which point, you know, again, being present and accounted for at 10 a.m. and 22 seconds has become less critical. Right. Um, and, and you can see that now with a thousand loans on the platform, some of which are, you know, there are C and D grade loans, which are historically in some of the most demand that have been, you know, available for three or four days. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. So would you ever think about changing your system so it's a little bit, so you don't get that horse race four times a day? Yes. I, I mean, I think we... Like I said, we're, we're constantly busy with taking a step back and looking at where are we and is this where we need to be going forward. Our, I don't think that he with the fastest server, shortest cable wins. You know, we don't love that as deciding, you know, who gets loan inventory. That is, that can be a factor today, I would say. And yeah. so, and we don't love that. I, I think the first thing we tried to solve was just making more inventory available. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I think we are actively talking about what other models might be that we could explore to change the way the inventory is accessed. Would you, would you ever consider going to a, like an auction model that is prevalent in the UK that sort of bid, they, people, they bid down the rate depending on how popular the loan is? Yeah, I'm, I don't really want to speculate on solutions because I know how these things can get away from us. <laughs> right. And, right. Okay. Um, okay. Fair enough. But I, I think I think it's fair to say that we we are actively talking about you know a variety of ways to ensure loan access for right. all our investors. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So you know you you know that um, there's been, there was massive influx of institutional money last year mm -hmm. and. You've you know, you've had to push back on a lot of people and said and, and they, they you, they've you know people have been disappointed. Do you do you think we will ever see or when will we see a demand and supply equilibrium again, with all the people who want to put money to work at Lending Club have full access to everything they want to put, to, which was the case not that long ago, a couple of years ago. Well, yeah, but then I would have told you that we needed more uh, <laughs> loans if that right. was the case, right? Um, so that's a, a theoretical question. Certainly, we don't love saying no, and we certainly love, you know, being able to bring both parties together, and we'd like to do it and, and grow that as quickly as possible. I think there's, in a marketplace, there's always going to be Balances shifting, right? right? I know. And, and there, was, there was a time, it was like just a bit over a year ago, where it was 2,000 loans on the platform. Um, for, and for the first time, some loans didn't get funded. Yeah. So that was obviously out of whack the other way. Exactly. But it seems like this way, I mean, the people that I speak to that want to put more money in can't. And that seems to be much more of the case now. It seems like we're a long way away back, we're a long way from that 2,000 loans sitting there and not getting funded. Yeah, I mean, I think that'll come down to coming. I mean, there will be macro uh, effects as well as things we do, we can do on the platform that will help bring all of that mm -hmm. balance back in line. So I, I don't want to say it won't get there. I think there will be there will be people, for example, who you know come in and say, "I want to earn twelve percent," and you know, over time, one of the mechanisms we have is obviously to say, well, if we have a lot of people all competing for this, clearly it's priced too high. So that's a mechanism we have. 
We have borrower supply, which is, you know, which is what we've been growing pretty deliberately yep. over time. We have um, kept that growth pace brisk. We haven't accelerated beyond where we are today because we think it's a kind of responsible pace of growth that, you know, to my earlier point of making sure we have all the other pieces in place and that the organization can plan for it. Uh, but I think we have an, a lot of levers. Our volume, pricing for investor, product type is another thing we can do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I'd say about once a week these days, I get emails from people who live outside this country saying, how can, how can they invest on Lending Club? Yeah. What are you, is that even on your radar? I mean, what can these people do? Radar, yes. Uh, you know, near-term near yeah. priorities. If you get those emails from the heart of Europe or wherever you're getting them from, I mean, imagine about, imagine what we're getting from sure. the people who live in New Jersey or Texas. <laughs> okay. Yes, point taken. Uh, yes. So, you know, we have a lot of markets in the U.S. that we are eager to, uh, that we're eager to open up to, and that would be where, you know, that would be the, the nearest term thing we do. Right. And, and so my understanding of that is, and I know you've got to go in just a minute, but I can't let you go without talking about the Lending Club IPO. Hmm. So the IPO, that will solve that problem, right? For the Texas investors in New Jersey, Ohio. So, yeah, we believe that following an IPO, we will uh, fall under what's called the Blue Sky Exemption, which will allow us to open up all of those states. So it's not an instant thing. It's not Lending Club's public and bam, you know, if you're from Texas, you can invest. We need to file all the paperwork to do, right. you know, okay. to do that. but. Yes, we think that that enables that right. opportunity for investors, and okay. we're excited about that. Okay, so last question: When's the IPO? Uh, <laughs> you're 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 nailing all the uh, all the questions. So um, nothing new to add to what we've already said, which is you know we plan to be ready uh, for some time later this year. Okay, great. Well, thanks a lot, Scott. Appreciate your time right. today. Thanks, Peter. Okay. Well, there you have it, Scott Sanborn, not exactly giving away any secrets there. Of course, I didn't expect he would, but I still found that uh, quite informative. Hope you did too. So that wraps up episode 10 of the Lend Academy podcast. And if you haven't already done so, I would really appreciate it if you head on over to Stitcher or iTunes, however you're listening to this podcast, and give me an honest review. I would certainly love to hear your feedback. On that note, I'll sign off. Um, next week, we will have Ron Suba of Prosper on the podcast. I will talk to you then. Thank you. Thank you.